For more information, visit lcdcexamreview.com. Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation for the eight practice domains for substance abuse counselors. In this presentation, I will be talking about practice domain number five, individual, family, and group counseling. What is counseling? Counseling is a set of methods designed to help clients progress toward mutually determined goals for recovery. Counseling includes individual counseling, group counseling, couples counseling, and family counseling. Individual counseling. Addictions counselors need to know the approaches to counseling that are person-centered and have demonstrated effectiveness in the treatment of substance abuse disorders. We also need to know the meaning of warmth, respect, genuineness, concreteness, and empathy, but not just our personal definition, but also the meaning of these concepts as they apply to the helping relationship. We must be familiar with active listening, and understand the concepts of transference and counter-transference. We need to be familiar with the theories and research about clients' motivation, counseling theories to promote client engagement, and the stages of change. Our goals in individual counseling are to work with our client to establish realistic and achievable goals, promote our client's knowledge, skills, and attitudes towards positive change, including the maintenance of health and prevention of HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, STDs, hepatitis C, and other infectious diseases. Work appropriately with our client to recognize and discourage all behaviors inconsistent with the progress in recovery. Know when, how, and why to involve the client's significant others. Facilitate the development of basic life and social skills. We, our goal is also to make constructive therapeutic responses when the client's behavior is inconsistent with the agreed recovery goals. And we must apply crisis prevention and crisis intervention skills. Group counseling. During group counseling, our client is the group as a whole. Just as in couples counseling, the client is the couple and not the individual members. However, we still have to consider individual differences when forming a group, such as the group size, the group type, purpose of the group, member selection criteria, group goals, behavioral ground rules for participating, outcomes, and criteria and methods for termination or graduation from group. Our skills in this area are the knowledge of group methods appropriate to help the client achieve objectives, the effectiveness of various models and strategies for group counseling for populations with substance abuse problems and with members of multicultural backgrounds. How to accommodate individual needs within the group. How to apply confidentiality rules in the group. The developmental processes affecting groups over time. We must know the transition stages in therapeutic groups. How, how to effectively address resistant behaviors transference issues and counter-transference issues within the group, and how to facilitate the entry of new members and the transition of graduating members. Group counseling could be challenging at times, especially when the counselor doesn't know or doesn't have a clear idea of what her or his role is in group. 
things we need to keep in mind are leadership, facilitator, and counselor methods appropriate for each group type and the therapeutic setting, types and uses of power and authority in group counseling, and when and how to use appropriate power. Part of our goals are to keep the proper documentation. Documentation is part of group counseling too. We must document measurable progress toward group and individual goals, know the concepts of process and content in order to make appropriate process interventions. We must be able to describe and summarize the client's behavior within group. This will help us identify the client's progress as well as issues and needs that may require a modification in the treatment plan. Family counseling. Family members contribute in different ways to the substance abuse behavior. It is not about putting the blame on someone, but inevitably, each member of a family plays a specific role in a family's problem. Understanding family dynamics helps us understand why addiction is called a family disease. Substance abuse counselors can offer a competent practice when they have the following knowledge. Systems theory and dynamics. Dynamics associated with substance use, abuse, dependence, and recovery in families and significant others. Interaction patterns on substance abuse behaviors. Cultural factors associated with family dynamics and substance abuse disorders. And signs and patterns of domestic violence. Also, as part of our skills, we need to be familiar with the models of diagnosis for families, intervention strategies appropriate for different stages of the problem, intervention strategies for violence within the family, laws and resources regarding violence within the family, methods for engaging family members and significant others in the treatment and recovery processes confidentiality and regulations regarding family counseling. Our goals in family counseling are to help families and significant others understand the effect of their interactions on substance abuse or substance use, to assist them in identifying and, and stopping harmful patterns of interaction help them learn healthy strategies and behaviors that maintain recovery and promote healthy relationships, assist them with referral to appropriate support resources. The recommended readings for this topic are part of the treatment improvement protocols, which are um, from the SAMHSA publications, and you can find this uh, tip, uh, TIP series um, on the SAMHSA website. So I have a list, a short list of the recommended readings here. One is for uh, group therapy, um, which is a TIP 41. And there's another TIP 41 group therapy in service training. These are seven modules for training and um, also the substance abuse treatment and family therapy. This is a TIP 39, TIP 35, enhancing motivation for change in substance abuse treatment. This is pretty much uh, motivation and interviewing techniques and the TIP 27, comprehensive case management and substance abuse treatment. All the links are provided in the description box. So don't forget to visit the description box and you can um, go to all these links and access these resources online or you can download some of those for free if the PDF format, I'm sorry, is available 
or you can just access these resources online. In the next presentation, I will be talking about practice domain number six, client, family, and community education. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Facebook, Google+, and of course my website lcdcexamreview.com, which is also my blog. And for more information, you can find uh, links in the description box. Don't forget to leave a comment. Let me know if there is anything you would want me to change or add to these presentations. And I will see you in the next presentation. Thank you. Bye-bye.